Gluten Abend, everybody around the world. Hope you're doing great. Thank you so much for tuning in. And this show is about your bread. We're going to have a look at all the amazing submissions uh, that you submitted. And just a little bit of background. I have been asking you to upload a picture, write a little bit of details on what you've done. And then some of you um, had the chance to also go through some of the submissions, rate them. And we are having a look at the top bread submissions. And I'm super excited because there have been so many amazing submissions. And um, it's going to be a lot of fun. So first of all, I always like to live stream and have, have everybody here from all around the world. Where are you guys from? Um, it's 9 p.m. here now in Hamburg, Germany. Oh, thank you, Jose. <laughs> Thanks for the hat. <laughs> Truly appreciate it. I would look less serious if I wouldn't have this hat. So this hat really uh, helps to strengthen my point when it comes to bread expertise, I guess. <laughs> Hello, Angelica. Uh, hello to Poland. Nice to have you on the show as well. Um, then we have Lourdes fr Schof from Texas, Tom from Luxembourg, MF from the Germany, uh, Aviatrix from California. Then we have Kate Durant from Senegal. Hi, how's it going? Uh, Simone from Greenland. Timo from Munich, this is crazy. Um, Denise from Brazil, hola, como estás? Eu gosto de beber de caipirinha. Okay, my uh, Portuguese is not that good. <laughs> Lilith from New York, hi, how are you? And uh, Arizona. Um, then we have somebody here from Connecticut. There's also a Twitch user. <laughs> I don't know how to pronounce this. Um, hi there as well. Um, and uh, Alessandro da Napoli. Is that Napoli in Italy? <laughs> uh, Seattle, UK. This is crazy. So many bakers from all around the world. <laughs> and Mr. Person uh, from UK. Awesome. OK, let's have a look and check out some of the submissions. I'm super excited to go through them. And I also shared the dial-in credentials. So in case you want to talk about the breads that you have made, they are inside of the descriptions in the video. So if you made a submission and um, you want to dial in, that would be even better. Then we can have a look and talk about this together. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, great. Uh, Rob says, from Mexico, don't have a bread, but I have the dough fermenting with Polish right now. So if you've never tried to make a sourdough, a Polish is a great way to make an awesome bread as well. Okay, dokie. Let's get started with the first submission from Rüdiger Bartz. Rüdiger Bartz. <laughs> let's check this out. And Rüdiger has made this amazing bread here. And let's have another look at what he wrote. Wheat rice sourdough, proofing at 30 degrees, um, piece proofing at 10 degrees Celsius for another 12 hours, baked at 260 degrees Celsius for 15 minutes with steam, baked out at 230, hydration around 20%. What do you think about this bread? Maybe we can introduce a rating scale. I think that would be fun, maybe from one to three. Um, one is the worst and three is the best. Let me just put up the other pictures here one more time. So this is the bread by Rüdiger. Rüdiger Bartz. I'm actually, I'm thinking this is, this is pretty impressive. And I think he has been using quite a lot of rye in there. So what do I look at for the perfect bread? To me, the perfect bread is always the combination of different consistencies. So you want to have a nice crisp crust. You want to have a fluffy inside. And you want your bread to also have a little bit of a crust from the bottom. And I think that makes the perfect bread. A slight sour note to it as well. <laughs> <laughs> and thank you so much for participating. The people are saying three, 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 three. And um, Rüdiger, 
I think you completely nailed it here on this bread. I would definitely also give you three because it just looks really amazing. So yeah, great submissions from Rüdiger. Thanks for the participation. And uh, let's have a look at the next one. <laughs> Seriously, my first bread looked way worse. My bread, my first bread was just super bad. <laughs> so yeah, good job, Rüdiger. Then we have another bread from Sandy Cheeks. And Sandy has also dialed into the live stream. So Sandy, you might want to um, activate your camera again, and then I can put you live on the stream. Just give me a thumbs up if you're ready. OK, great. So Sandy, how are you? How's it going? Nice Hi, Dr. Do. <laughs> you can hear me well? Yes, yeah. loud and clear. Yeah. Great. So tell us about this magic bread that you have been baking. Uh, well, I've been exper uh, experimenting for quite a while. But mm -hmm. uh, what um, uh, what I struggle with, let's say, or what I wonder is uh, when you guys cut it, like you or Suna or uh, Kirsten, the bread opens up like mad, you know, like this oven spring uh, that, that um, I don't know, mm -hmm. yeah, the cut mm -hmm. opens much more than it does here in this bread. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, yeah, I've experimented with hydration, with the temperature and everything. Mm -hmm. uh, I was wondering, maybe you have some other tips somehow. Uh, for instance, typically, I think you guys use usually somewhat smaller uh, loaf size. Do you think that matters? Or I don't I think feel that like matters. If I go through this uh, work amount, then uh, I better make somewhat bigger bread. Otherwise, it's gone <laughs> for breakfast yeah. with my family. <laughs> <laughs> so how much yeah. flour did you use for this one? Uh, the total is, uh, let's say, one. 0.25 kilograms, so the flour is what? Uh, so the total weight, I, I including the water, there. is um, 1.25. So the, yeah, and it's a hydration okay. of 76%. So ah, I yeah. have baked yeah. breads at maybe 650, 700 grams of flour, I would say. OK, uh, yeah. so I don't think that's the problem, because I've baked breads yeah. at 1.5 kilograms, and they also yeah. opened up quite a lot. Mm -hmm. um, have you have you seen the trick that I do uh, with extracting a small fermentation sample? Uh, no. That, uh, yeah, I know what you mean. I haven't tried it. That's what. Let me just let me just double check. I think I even have a small video on this. Yes. Okay. Let me just put up the video here. One second. Mm -hmm. Great German yeah. song on there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <Very> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. um, yeah. Okay. So you wanna you you suggest to monitor the fermentation a bit more? Yes. Mm. So in my in my experience, it's typically either you're not creating enough dough strength for your dough, so you mm. might want to mm. just need a little bit more. Um, you can also compensate if you don't need as much by doing some stretch and folds in between. Uh, use use the machine and coil folds. Uh, okay, then yeah. that's probably not going to be the issue, I think. Mm. Very likely, then, that's the fact that you either have to ferment a little bit more or mm -hmm. you ferment it too little. Just looking based on the crumb, I would say you could probably ferment a little bit more. You have, I mean, mm -hmm. you have nice, nice pockets there, but you yeah. don't have those tiny, tiny pockets somewhere. Mm -hmm. If you look at some mm -hmm. of the crumbs that I have, you notice I have some yeah. larger pockets of air, but then I also yeah. have many, many tiny pockets of air. So right. if you inflate your bread more, it's also going to be able to rise more in the oven. Mm -hmm. Yeah, OK. I, I can have a look at that. So, uh, it is, um, of course, a bit tricky to figure the, the sweet spot. Uh, otherwise, it collapses and it looks even worse. Oh, oh <laughs> yes. <Yeah. laughs> Let's check what the others are saying. So somebody yeah. saying overproofed. Um, yeah. If you taste your bread, um, does it taste a little bit sour? Mm, yeah, a little bit. But uh, I think I, I was careful not to go too sour. So the starter... Okay. I uh, refreshed it. So I take out of the fridge, then I feed it, what, one, two, five, mm -hmm. to five. And then again, mm -hmm. 
Uh, and uh, then, yeah, I use this timetable that you put up in one mm -hmm. of your posts. From mm -hmm. that, uh, I forgot the, the guy that originally made it. I mm -hmm. looked at the, yeah, I plotted it and I looked at the spot of my temperature, let's say, and then, yeah, I just took this four and a half hours for, what is it, uh, Stockgare. What's it? Uh, bulk and, fermentation. And bulk, bulk fermentation. And uh, then uh, two and a half hours, I put, I left it in this warm temperature to proof after shaping and, or pre shaping mm -hmm. and shaping. And I left it overnight in the fridge, which is five degrees as far as I can tell. So you left it for two hours at room temperature after you shaped yeah. it? Yeah. Okay. Maybe it has been a little bit too long as well. But I think there's mm -hmm. one comment which Tom had here on the chat. I think mm -hmm. that's a really excellent comment. And that yeah. has been an issue for me as well. So Tom has been saying um, he had an issue with the oven temperature today. It killed his oven spring. And yeah. Maybe just I an measured. idea. Maybe you measured yeah. it at which which temperature was it? Two thirty. In the in the Dutch oven is two thirty. Yeah, that, okay. that's quite stable. And the oven itself okay. is not so stable, but uh, in the Dutch oven, it's in Dutch oven, it should be more stable, right? Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, and mm. I spritzed it, and uh, yeah. you spritzed this as well. Yes. Okay. I, I saw uh, your you, video how... about this 230 degrees. I thought, okay, I'm gonna try that. <laughs> okay. Okay. I think it is a bit better than I would have be what I had before, but yeah. And when you okay. shape, how do you typically shape? <sighs> naja, uh, what do I do? Um, uh, naja, I, I uh, follow a little bit what you guys are doing. So I have this uh, dough okay. scraper, uh, mm -hmm. make a bowl once, leave it for 15 minutes covered uh, under a steel bowl. Uh, then I take it off, uh, yeah, mm -hmm. sprinkle it with flour, turn it around, stretch it a bit out, and then put it together. This one I fold it actually a bit like a uh, what is the other thing, the batard. So yeah, so where you ah, fold okay. it over, boom and boom, and then you kind of roll it up, and mm -hmm. then I put with a dough scraper again to to really have a nice tight uh, shape, and then I put it in the it on. Okay. Uh, yeah. Let me just put up one more video here of me shaping and let's have a look and then maybe you can tell me if you have been doing it similar. Mm So uh, like let's this? say the first time you you started with doing the bull, yeah? you made it very round, mm -hmm. this, this ball, and then mm -hmm. I leave it to rest for a while before mm -hmm. I go to the second step where you make this, you turn it over and then you make this kind of square okay. shape bowl, and you fold it and uh, then roll it up. So yeah, this pre shape this pre this pre shaping that I did, if you just make mm -hmm. one dough at the same time, then you can easily skip it. Um, it's okay. not required. It's it's only mm -hmm. required in case you want to make multiple loaves at the same time. So right. in case you just make one, I would probably just flip the container over and uh, shape the dough directly. Mm -hmm. Okay, and well, that would make it easier. Another comment which I just saw here from Aviatrix. Thank you, great comment. Mine goes straight mm -hmm. in the fridge after shaping. Um, mm -hmm. So one one problem that could also happen with your fridge. You said it's at five degrees Celsius, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, five yeah, degrees Celsius. Yeah, five, yeah, as far as my thermometer is precise, I don't, I don't trust it. Yeah, much. and I made a small table here for the Americans yeah. here. <laughs> Wait a second. <laughs> <laughs> so around yeah, five, five degrees. degrees. Yeah, that's yeah. around forty to forty-two degrees Fahrenheit. <laughs> and um, what I noticed. If I have many loaves in the fridge at the same time, then my yeah. dough just doesn't cool down that quickly. Mm. One thing, so okay. one thing I would recommend you to also test is maybe to shorten the the time, the temperature that you have at room temperature, and move yeah. it directly to the fridge, or you bake it the same day. Maybe that's also a good mm. idea. You wait until the finger poke test passes, mm. and then you bake it directly. Yeah. 
Okay, yeah, that's another good idea. Because with the uh, finger poke test, you will I, know very reliably that your dough is actually done proofing. With the fridge, it's all okay. with the fridge, it's always a little bit. Ah, you don't know is it really done or so. But with the finger so poke, you poke it. You, can... you poke it, and it does not spring back fully, right? It's like yes. uh, it takes a while. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. Let me let me check. I also have another video on this. Yes. So maybe an idea for I you as well. Then, then yeah. thank you. Then at least you know that you proved on time. Mm. Yes. Okay. So keep us posted, Sandy. Your bread. Yes, I mean, Sandy. the people have already voted on it. Let's vote one more time for Sandy. I'm gonna put his pictures <laughs> uh, on here one more time. Um, uh, where is it? Here. So Sandy number one, yeah. and Sandy number two. What do you guys think? What is this? A one, two, three. <laughs> and see sandy you're getting good comments here uh three i would say you're very close i would give it a two probably but i think this is already much much better than the first breads that i have been baking mm -hmm. so right, yeah thanks. just yeah. just keep doing what you're doing if you have questions feel free to reach out one more time and yeah thanks for joining this show yeah yeah thank you and keep it up it's a very nice channel Truly really uh, appreciate it. I also it. like these interviews with Kristen and Suna very much. So yeah. thank you. I'll have a few more interesting interviews coming up soon. Very nice. Okay. All I'm right, curious. Sandy. Thank yeah, you. Bye -bye. See you. Bye. bye bye. So great breaths here from Sandy, and uh, I think this just shows one more time that there are so many different parameters that influence uh, your bread, and for the perfect sourdough you really have to nail every single parameter. It's the perfect balance between all of them. And thanks for this uh, votes here. So Malini is saying three, Frank, a solid two, Simone, a 2.5, 2.8 here, that's very specific. Uh, Simone, beautiful, Anna saying three, um, Alien is saying three, so Sandy, good job, seriously. I think the people really like, uh, like your bread. Okay, awesome. Um, let's go to the next submission. Mm -hmm. So I, I prepared a few videos here and I also prepared a few flowcharts. So we might have a chance to open up, uh, have a look at them in just a little bit. <laughs> Okie doke. So Rüdiger. And then the next submission we have is from Robin. Are you ready for Robin's bread? Robin, this is your bread. Is that poppy seeds in English? Please help me here. Uh, Moon in the German. Is that poppies, poppy seeds in English? I don't know. <laughs> so picture from Robin. Uh, Robin Rollack, my latest results. And uh, you made a few mistakes, but it still looked delicious. And uh, he seems to have really enjoyed the bread that he made. Let me put that on here one more time. Robin's bread, looking great. And what I truly appreciated about Robin's submission was the following. Are you ready for it? <laughs> oh, Robin, you would get a three of three, definitely just for the handwriting, because I definitely can't handwrite at all. And you have great handwriting. <laughs> so. Everything times two, that's where Baker's math comes in handy. You can just calculate the ingredients like that. Um, water, salt, and he also used a little bit of spelt. And um, yes, overall, I would say the bread opened up nicely. And let's check what you guys have to say on this bread. So, gorgeous. <laughs> Poppy seeds. Ah, Cameron, thank you so much. So that's the right name, Poppy seeds. <laughs> uh, 
Ernesto asks, how do I send a pick off my bread? So unfortunately, the submissions are closed now, but you can on the next uh, show that we're doing. Simply when I write a post, just comment on the post, and we will be reviewing the top uh, voted submissions. So also thank you, everybody, who voted on the submissions. Then we can select the most interesting, interesting ones and have a look at them together. <laughs> Uh, so the others have been saying, let me just put uh, on the picture one more time. That's Robin right here. And Teresa is saying, Georges. Alien is saying, really wonderful bread. Uh, Marta is saying, looks good and very tasty. And I totally agree, Robin. I think this bread just looks amazing. I like the poppy seeds. They probably add amazing flavor to it as well. Um, you probably use them as a flower replacement inside of your Benetton, which is also a really great idea. Um, so good job. I don't have a lot to say on what to improve. For Well, one minor thing maybe for my personal taste, it could have been a little bit darker. But then in the end, that's just my personal taste. <laughs> <laughs> so Crystal, hi, Hendrik. And look whom we have here. Sardo Duffy, can I show mine? Um, yes, probably you can. If you don't know Sardo Duffy, you should check out Matthew's Instagram. Uh, Matthew James Duffy, uh, Sardo Duffy on Instagram. He really does amazing bread and he also has a YouTube channel. So thanks for uh, tuning in here. Truly appreciate it. <laughs> uh, C. Fazio says, please post on Telegram. I hadn't heard about this. OK, next time I will announce it a little bit earlier. I was just laying in bed this morning. And I thought, OK, I just want to do another Dr. Doe again, because you have asked me so many questions. And I figured I just want to chat with you one more time and see what you're up to and give you some feedback. <laughs> All right, OK, so let's have a look. And let's give Robin a rating on his bread. What does everybody think? So from one to three, Jose is saying a three. <laughs> so then we have another three coming in here from Serpents. Marta is also saying a three. Peter is saying a three. <laughs> Blue Boots is saying a three. Oh. And we have a verdict from Sardo Duffy, a one. How comes? What's wrong? What do you think? What could be improved on this bread? <laughs> By the way, if you want, there are dialed in credentials um, inside of the description of this video in case you want to join and have a chat with me. So 2.7, 2.97 by Caro. Um, Cifazio says, it looks like it might have been overproved. Um, we need to see the crumb. Yes, totally valid point. When you submit a bread, a good idea is also always to uh, show a picture of the crumb because there might be a few things um, that could be improved. So, sourdough Duffy, great attempt. So, uh, by the way, Matthew also holds a title for the sourdough professor. He's saying, great attempt, but it needs more steam for sure. You can tell, by the way, the middle is collapsing. Interesting comment. So a little bit more steam. And now he says, I think one was harsh, so I'd like to give it two. OK, <laughs> we will accept the two. <laughs> so yeah, thank you so much for the submission. Uh, one more time, this was the submission by Robin, Robin Rollack. Thank you so much. Great submission. And thanks for the feedback, everybody. Next up was Sandy, but we already had a chat with Sandy. And now I have something really cool coming up from T. Erha. I hope I can pronounce, I did pronounce your name correctly, T. Erha. <laughs> so T. Erha, basically my standard recipe, push the hydration level, but uh, doesn't think your flour can take a lot more than 67% water. OK, are you ready for it? This one is really looking great. Wow, look at that ear. <laughs> and also that nice pattern coming from the Benetton. That looks amazing. And the number three, this is the crump. So let's check one more time. 
67 uh, percent water steam tray and a tray on top then another 10 minutes without steam tray on top i'm open for any advice what do you think what could have been improved on this bread so let me just put the pictures here one more time the submission by t erha what do you think what could have improved <laughs> <laughs> so beautiful from so young kim simona says um, 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 um. <laughs> malini solid 10 <laughs> video video asta says also three <laughs> and this is a great comment, I think, by Ernesto Vineyard. And this is also something I would say, um, also something I learned from Matthew, who, who was just here on the live stream. And that was, he sometimes likes to score the bread more in the uh, middle of the bread. And I personally recently have started to enjoy that way of scoring a little bit more. The bread is not going to have such a super ear because I feel a nice ear is good, but here it might have just been a little bit too much. Um, of an ear. Um, C. Fazio says three for the look, 2.5 for the crump. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's give this one more final voting. What do you think? So from one to three. I'm very excited to read. Marta is also saying here, a little darker would be ideal. Yes, I personally also like it a little bit darker, but that also depends on the personal preference, of course. <laughs> Crystal is saying, looks gorgeous to me. Alien is saying, amazing. Oh, and we have T. Erha here on the chat as well. Thanks, guys. <laughs> and all the votes are coming in. So I think Laura saying 2.99. That's almost a three. <laughs> Alien saying three. Leonardo saying nicely scored. Crystal saying three. Um, Ahan Sigby saying 2.8. To 2.69. <laughs> uh, Matthew is saying 1.8. That's very specific. Uh, 2.7. So, T. Erha, I think you seriously did ama an amazing job on this. Um, maybe try the scoring method to be a little bit more in the center. And personally, I would like the bread to be a little bit darker. But whatever you're doing, you're doing it really, really uh, great already. There's not that much to improve, I think. OK, next up, we have an amazing submission coming up. And let me just show you the picture here. <laughs> From Zach. <laughs> we need to have some details on this, OK? <laughs> so Zach has been trying to make my discard starter recipe. And let me just put on a video real quick of my discard starter recipe so that you know what this is actually about. Where do I have the video? Um, doop, 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 doop. Here it is. I'm putting it on the screen now. Enjoy. So that was the recipe um, Zach was trying to bake. And uh, let me show the picture one more time here from Zach. So Zach Filler, he followed the 150 hour sardo discard loaf. And here are the pictures from Zach. A little bit of background on the recipe. Whenever you're feeding your sourdough starter, you sometimes have a little bit of sourdough left that you don't use, and that is called the discard. Some people throw it away, but I always like to call it long, slow fermented sourdough. And you can use that, store it in your fridge for a long period of time, up to a month or two months. And then at some point, you take all that out and you bake in a nice, amazing bread out of this. And that's what I like to do. It's actually my personal favorite bread to bake because I feel the slow fermentation just adds so much incredible uh, taste to it. And if you have not tried the recipe, please 
check that out. Um, Sardoffy, how do you send a picture? Um, OK, what you want to do is maybe for the end, you can, hmm, you can, you have my WhatsApp number, right? Just send me, a, just send me a picture over there or on Instagram. Instagram as a direct message, that would be the best, I think. And let's put up a bread from the Sardo professor at the end of, end of the show. That would be amazing. <laughs> so, okay, back to the bread by Zach. Um, let me put that on the screen here one more time. What do you think? What could Zach have improved? So Zach, I'm curious to read what the others are saying, but I think uh, you should have let this proof for a little bit longer. You can see that it's very, 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 very dense. And um, what I like to do is I just I mix everything together. The recipe is relatively easy. And then at some point, I just let that sit and I wait for it to increase in size a little bit. But it seems that your bread didn't increase that much in size. And of course, if you don't do that, then it can be very, very dense. You want to wait a little bit so that it gets fluffy. Of course, you can't get a bread like this from T. Erha or Sandy. That's not possible because a lot of the gluten has broken down. That's also what makes this bread relatively healthy, I would say, because it's really slow, long fermented um, flour, pretty much. But you want to wait a little bit until you have a little bit of a size increase, and then you want to bake it. So yes, great comment here by Caro. Starter looks inactive, and that's the problem. If your starter has been in the fridge for a very long time, it's relatively inactive. So you might just have to wait for a little bit longer. <laughs> Not proofing enough. Yes, exactly. So that's probably going to be the issue. All right, so everybody, from one, two, three. Uh, what is your comment on this bread by Zach? One more time, the bread from Zach. <laughs> and I'm <clears throat> I'm really wondering about the taste as well, Zach, because you didn't write that. Or did you write that? Nope. Uh, so what does everybody think about the bread from Zach? <laughs> okay, we have a one here. We have a 0 0.5, a one, <laughs> and three points for the effort. <laughs> so I think Zach, just wait a little bit longer, and then it's gonna get, uh, it's gonna rise a little bit more, and then it will be fluffier. Um, so then Frank is saying 1.5, Hassan is saying one, Manolo a one. Crystal is saying two, she's generous. 1.2, 0 0.02, 1.5 from Leonardo. Um, Malini, solid three for the effort. So thanks for the submission, Zach. Please uh, submit another bread the next time so that we can see the improvement from this time to the next time. I would be super curious to see. And please do let me know if the tips have been helpful. All right. Next up comes another contestant, Blue Boots. Blue Boots. And this is the picture from Blue Boots. Blue Boots 2. And this is the third picture that I have. Let's just go back to the recipe. Around 77% hydration. 14% uh, protein, 25% whole wheat flour. So that's a great combination. I like to do that as well. Um, I would like more blisters and I will try to bake it a bit hotter. I try to lower the temperature because of the underside of the bread becomes quite dark when I bake at 230, 240 degrees Celsius. This bread was slightly overproof because I forgot the time and turned the oven on too late. Oops. Really hope you'll have a look at this bread and give some further insight. What does everybody think about the bread from uh, Blue Boots? <clears throat> so Blue Boots wants to have a few more blisters, but other than that, she is quite happy with the bread. 
Oh, or maybe he. I'm not sure. Sorry. <laughs> so blue boots one more time. What do you think could have improved? <laughs> Here we have an interesting conversation between Angelica and Simona. Angelica saying uh, her starter Enzo is crazy. He doubled in size with one to ten to ten ratio in twenty one degrees and eight hours. And then Simona saying, "Ha, my dog is named Enzo." <laughs> uh. <laughs> See Fazio saying Crump looks off, shaping problem. Jose saying the blisters are overrated. <laughs> Gerardo saying it's three. Mr. Person is saying slight underproved. Leonardo saying beautiful bread. So um... <laughs> Very curious to hear your thoughts. <clears throat> More steam, 2.75. I think slightly over fermented, says Frank. Um, then we have Cristiano Enrique from Hamburg. Hola, como estás? <laughs> uh, Manolo is saying, looks great. Maybe a little more baking time for extra crunch. <laughs> 2.7 for blue boots. <laughs> so yes, uh, place your votes. Um, just wanted to comment because Blue Boots, you have been asking on what's the trick for more uh, blisters. <clears throat> and for blisters, as far as I know, you have to ferment on point. That's when you get the blisters. So if you overproof, you won't get blisters. If you proof for too little, you also won't get blisters. So you really have to make sure that there is a lot of gas inside of your dough. And if you do everything right, then that's a sign that you will get blisters. Plus, you will also need to have a lot of steam inside of your oven. So the combination of perfect fermentation and a lot of steam, that's going to get you those blisters. And as you were already writing that you slightly over-fermented it, um, that could be the reason. And by the way, in fact, I also noticed that on my room temperature proof those, I would also get blisters. So. Sometimes I got more on cold proof ones, but I would not say that that's the main deciding factor that it's cold proofed. So let's go back to the comments here. Uh, Labelic 2.5, Alien 2.5, Marta 2.8, Simona is <laughs> saying 2.8. Uh, Labelic, is it bad if I didn't give a name to my starter? Uh, Labelic. Can you guys please enlighten label like why you should always give a name to your starter? Please do. And I'm just checking because Matthew just wanted to send another picture. Um, let me just put on my phone here and see if we have another picture submission from the sourdough uh, professor. So, no, not yet. Maybe in a little bit later. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so why should you give your starter name? Please, serious answers. Why is it important to give your sourdough starter a name? <laughs> <laughs> Alien says, name gives good luck. Uh, <laughs> Merlin says, it's the law to give it a name. Cameron says, it's alive, and your positivity improves the yeast cell growth. I think you're right. <laughs> Personality gives flavor. So yes, um, Simona says, it makes you love it. Your sourdough starter is your child. Yes, you want to give your uh, child a name, right? Don't you? <laughs> so yes, I hope that answered the question. You always have to give your sourdough starter a name. And I'm curious to read what are the names that you gave your sourdough starter. <laughs> it makes you respect your best friend. So true. Uh, my sourdough starter is also my best friend. <laughs> so Traveler, we have just been chatting about uh, that you should give your sourdough starter a name and that it's very, very important. <laughs> mm. 
<laughs> Mr. Person, that's such a good uh, such a good argument. It makes you attached to it, so you're not as likely to give up on it. Plus, you feel guilty for not feeding it. <laughs> Frank is writing, so you can bury it and cry if it dies. <laughs> Lindsay says, I'm a bad mommy. Didn't uh, name my cider. Any suggestions? <laughs> Walter, for instance. Then we have Margot, <laughs> Doe Mama. <laughs> uh, that's amazing. <laughs> Label X says, tomorrow will be a busy day. Need to find a name for my best friend. Yes. <laughs> uh, Herman, also a good one. Uh, Sally and Charlie are my two starters. So uh, maybe just a few uh, ideas for uh, a few names here that you can choose from. <laughs> uh, then I get a question from Hassan. Are you thinking of a live interview with Brett by Jawright Coffee? It's actually a good idea. I'm going to reach out to him and see. But I do have an amazing interview planned for next week, and I can already announce it. And next week, live on the show, if everything works out, because he's super, super busy, um, is going to be John from uh, Proof Baking. Uh, he has a bakery in Arizona, and he's making amazing footage on YouTube on how he works in the bakery and how they do amazing bread. And I want to find out what changes when you have to bake bread on scale. Can you still do all that stretching and folding? Does it not work anymore? Uh, what changes? And that's what something we're going to find out next week. So stay tuned and feel free to also join that live stream. I'm going to submit a post soon where you can also ask some questions to proof baking. So that's uh, really going to be super interesting as well. <clears throat> all right. So just slightly off topic here, let's go back to the submission. Another submission by Ochpoch. Ochpoch, let me put that here on the screen. The bread by Ochpoch. And I'm now putting the recipe here. So Almost completely T45. I think that's an all purpose flour, if I know correctly. 100 grams of sourdough, 65% water, 10% salt. Can somebody of you please? Um, have you ever tried to make bread with 10% salt? Has that ever happened to somebody of you? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Caesar! Thank you so much. Yes, we are interviewing John. It's going to be super interesting. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I'm really looking forward to it as well. I have so much stuff to learn from him. 10% <laughs> uh, salt. Has any one of you ever tried that? <laughs> uh... <laughs> Uh, I think that was me a typo. typo. <laughs> uh, what would happen if you would use 10% salt for a bread? Would that would the fermentation even work with 10% salt? <laughs> so one more time from Oshpoch. So I think that was a typo from your side from your side. It's probably 10 grams of salt, not 10% salt. And here's the picture. So What's your verdict, everybody? What do you think about Ochpoch's bread from one to three? And Ochpoch also says, the only thing that didn't work are the blisters. I don't have that much. I don't know if I put enough water. So blisters on the crust here. There are a few blisters as far as I can see, um, but not that many. So Ochpoch would also love to have a few more blisters <laughs> um, Merlin says 2.5 <laughs> uh, MK says that's actually a totally valid comment here MK 
uh, you wouldn't need salted butter butter for this kind of bread. <laughs> so, wait, that's the wrong picture? Am I showing the wrong picture? No, I'm not showing the wrong picture, or am I? Oh, yes, I'm so sorry. Yes, blue boots, my bad. <laughs> I'm a disaster person. So here, this is Arch Potch. My, uh, I'm sorry, blue boots. <laughs> <laughs> we just reviewed your bread. I don't know if you saw it already. Um, you can also rewatch it a little bit later. So feedback for Arch Podge. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, mm, apologies. <laughs> All right, so <clears throat> my thoughts. Please uh, vote on the bread. What do you think from one to three? Um, Arch Podge's uh, bread. First of all, uh, I also want to talk about the blisters one more time. To get blisters, you also shouldn't be using that much, I think, is that rice flour, which I see here on the crust? You don't want that. You want to use as little flour as possible on the outside. And if you ferment exactly on point, that's the moment when you get the blisters. So reduce the flour which you have on your surface and... Um, work a little bit more on the fermentation, although I would say that you're already very, very close based on the oven spring and everything. I'm I'm already quite happy. But this is a little bit of too much flour to me here on the surface. So then we have So Young saying 2.8, Labelic 2.6, Xenophone 3, Dorothy saying 2.6, Leonardo a solid 3. <laughs> And Cameron is saying the crust looks lovely. Marta is saying it's not so high, so 2.5 and a 3. So, Archpoch, I think you, you really nailed it. Everybody thinks that you made an amazing bread. So, uh, good job. So, yeah, nicely done. For the blisters, as I said, work on the fermentation. Don't use as much uh, flour on the outside. <laughs> and now comes a person from Norway, Amund. And Amund has been baking my favorite bread. So uh, let me just unstick this here. And there we go. We have Amund coming up with another 150 hour discard starter bread. Um, seeds and everything 150 hour start of bread and this is Amon's submission let me just put on the submission one more time uh from zach who also made the same bread here we talked about it before so that was zach's submission <clears throat> and now let's go back to Amund. so what do you think about this Bread. So that was the 150 hour sourdough bread version. If you have not tried that recipe yet, that's definitely something you want to try because it gives you a really amazing bread with superb taste. <laughs> three, three, uh, so nice, great result. Um, Almond, so everybody loves your bread. Dorothy is saying, looks awesome. Mr. Person is saying, three. Wowzers. <laughs> Marta is also saying a three. Uh, Pow Pow gives you a three as well. Um, bottom looks a little bit denser than the top, says Caro. Stephanie is saying a three. Uh, so Young a three. <laughs> Alien is saying 3.141. I see where you get that number from. <laughs> looks tasty, three. And uh, Amund. You completely nailed it. Your bread even looks better than the one that I did in the video. So good job. I think this is also three out of three. This is the perfect uh, slow fermented sourdough bread. You won't get an as much open crumb, but still the taste that bread has, it's got to be out of this world. So good job. Thanks for the submission. <clears throat> Okie dokes. And I have something here. I have another submission and it's a little bit of a different <clears throat> submission. It's more of a text submission. And let me put that here on the screen. That's coming from MCA 
shadow. And MCA shadow is saying, I can't. I still failed in the 23rd attempt, not even close to a decent bread. And um, thank you so much also whenever you see a comment like this uh, to just say, you will get there, try again, because I think sourdough is something that you won't get right on the first time. If you do, then you're lucky, but chances are that the second bread that you're making is just gonna be very, very flat or so. And don't give up, keep trying. And um, <clears throat> it's a long road. And I would say the number one thing that you wanna look at is to just um, nail the fermentation process. That's really the biggest factor that you have at hand, the biggest factor that you can control. So MCA Shadow, um, everybody here on, uh, the chat is saying, yes, please keep going. Happens to, to them too. And um, don't give up. You will eventually get there. Uh, you forever learn exactly. And then Malini is saying, you mean first 100 times are usually quite sad. <laughs> uh. <clears throat> so just keep going. You will eventually get there at some point. No need to give up. And if you have questions, feel free to always ask them. I might not be able to answer them directly, but there are so many great bakers here in this community and somebody is gonna be around to just give you uh, some tips in which direction you should be going. So <clears throat> apologies for this slightly different submission, but I just wanted to show, um, don't give up, keep baking, and um, then you will eventually make amazing sardo bread. <laughs> Sifaz, you're saying, it took me years, and so true. <laughs> and then Mr. Person saying, you always think it's never going to happen until it does. <laughs> Frank is saying, took me a month of baking twice a week to get decent results. And then Serpents is saying, but the fails still taste amazing. And that's so true. With sourdough, the fails still taste amazing. Okie dokes. Let's have a look at the next submission from Rangefinder. <clears throat> Rangefinder General. That reminds me a little bit of Command and Conquer Generals or something. <laughs> <laughs> and Rangefinder has made some baguettes. And I just want to show you the baguettes that Rangefinder made. Just um, occasional baguettes, yeasted. Um, I'll do Sardo as soon as I get the hang of shaping. So. Rich Render saying he's not a pro in making baguettes. But then he submitted this insane picture. And he's saying, yeah, I'm not that much of a pro, but I just, I made the perfect baguettes, you know? <laughs> Check this out. <clears throat> Those are the baguettes Rangefinder made. Isn't that insane? And he's just saying, let me just... Put that here on the screen one more time. Yeah, as soon as I get the hang of shaping, um, then I'll make sourdough and just look at the baguettes that he, <laughs> he made. <laughs> oh, wow, WTF. <laughs> wow, those are perfect. <laughs> nice and uh, great shaping. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that man is a master. Damn. So, Rangefinder, you completely nailed the baguettes, I would say. I wish I could make such beautiful baguettes. And as far yeah. as I can see, you didn't even use some kind of tool to bake them in. You just bake them like that. And for that, they look even <laughs> more amazing. <laughs> Hassan is saying, best of the night. And Sophie is saying, I wish I could do those. Joachim, 11 out of 10. <laughs> Marta wants you to send her some of them. <laughs> saying three is redundant. <laughs> uh, <laughs> wow, I'm leaving. <laughs> Beauty. I would pay for it. Uh, <laughs> and so Young says, why each of the baguettes looks so different? And I think that's because Rangefinder, um, yeah, still wants to work a little bit on the shaping technique. That's why they look a little bit different. <laughs> but I think, yes, looks like a bakery photo. 
But if we look at the bread in the back, um, I'm not sure if they were made from the same dough. They didn't open as much. And maybe that's a sign that uh, the temperature has been a little bit too hot or so. So maybe rangefinder, that's something that you can experiment with a little bit. <laughs> Jose is saying 3.14. Crystal gives you a three as well. Simone, three plus, plus, plus. So <laughs> Chris is saying, well, I feel incompetent. Yes, Chris, um, I think that's completely normal because those baguettes are just out of this world. And let me just put this comment here from Rangefinder one more time. Uh, yeah, you know what? As soon as I get the hang of shaping, then I'll make sourdough, whatever. And then he's showing me a picture of the gets like that. <laughs> oh, and Rangefinder General here is on the chat as well. So <laughs> so. <laughs> Um, another three as well, Ragefinder, if you just joined, people seriously have been uh, just giving you super good comments here on the baguettes, and you really did an amazing job. So great submission. Thank you so much, Rangefinder. That was truly uh, a lot of fun. And I might need to ask you for some tips on the baguettes. <laughs> All righty. <clears throat> Next up. We have a submission from Stefan, Stefan Mittermeier. Very, uh, I think, Austrian name, if I am correct. Stefan Mittermeier. <laughs> so rye flour, whole grain, bread flour. So quite a little bit, 50% pretty much whole wheat flour. And then have a look at the bread Stefan made. Holy schnitzel. That's some oven spring here <clears throat> with 50% whole wheat flour. And he says, my best results so far. So what do you all think about Stefan's submission? Let me put that here on the screen one more time from one, two, three. <laughs> Label like saying three out of three. Dorothy is saying, <laughs> three. So <clears throat> looks like it exploded. Three. Sandy is also giving you a three. Hassan is also giving you a three. Three, no doubt. And um, seriously, uh, I, I couldn't agree anymore. I think, Stefan, you just made a super amazing bread there. Also with a 50% whole wheat inside. Well, not whole wheat, but also rye. The flavor of this bread is going to be really, really awesome. I always like to mix in a little bit of rye because I think this just makes the bread taste so much better. So everybody is giving you, <laughs> there is no problem. Um, Sifaz is saying hard to judge with the crumb without a crumb shot. That's actually a valid point. So for the next submission, please always also include a crumb shot if possible so that we can judge the crumb a little bit to see if the fermentation was on point. <laughs> Molnar is saying, uh, that's not bad anymore. That's magic. Um, great. Caro is saying 2.69. Yeah, totally. <laughs> All right. Great submission, Stefan. Thank you so much. And next up comes another great submission. And I want to um, show you that as well, because this is something very, very Interesting. By the way, Carol, you have a nice Psyduck uh, right there in your name. Oops. OK, next submission coming up from So Young. So, So Young. Did I pronounce your name correctly? I hope that's actually correct. Or, or is it So Young? I'm, I'm sorry. I'm a terrible person. <laughs> So the problems, let's have a look at the problems that So Jung describes at the bottom. <clears throat> Doesn't have an ear, big holes, not enough fermentation overall, question mark. I'm afraid of developing too much sarno because I like my bread mild. How does yours taste like? And bread from So Jung coming up now. <laughs> so So Jung's bread here. What does everybody think? What do you think can be improved on So Jung's bread? 
<laughs> I'm very excited to read what you have to say. Ah, Su Yung is here. Su Su Yung. Su Yung. <laughs> okay, I'm I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Label X says that's a pocket. Crystal is saying underproved. Uh Caro is saying underfermented. Um lower the temp, inactive starter, uh way underfermented, fool's crump. <laughs> Su Young, okay. Looks like overfermented. Uh Su Young just also said, okay, so Su Young, okay, that's the name. I'm sorry. <laughs> and um Ah, great play with words here. Sardo is too young. <laughs> Underfermented. Um, the holes are from needing. No stretching. Is that the modeling? Needing more. <laughs> so I think that also all the comments here point towards the right direction. And I'm just going to be putting up another video here. I showed it before, and I'm going to show it one more time again. <clears throat> and that is uh, how to use my small fermentation sample. And check this out. This is going to make your bread so much better, so young. So you extract a small piece of the dough, OK? And you take that small piece of the dough and use that to monitor your fermentation progress. Now, the size increase for how much your dough should increase in size. Oh, look at this, right? I even got some pictures here to show this. <laughs> Depends on the protein that you have inside of your flour. Generally speaking, the more protein you have inside of your flour, the longer you can ferment. <clears throat> and if you have, let's say, 10% protein, you might want to look at a 10 to 20% size increase with 10 to 12% at a 20 to 40% size increase. And just extract a small piece of the dough, keep that next to your main dough, and then you will ferment on point. Because those large pockets of hair, it's a little bit like if you make a pita bread, uh, a non-yeasted pita bread, for instance, <clears throat> where you just roll out, where you just roll out the dough and then you put it on a hot stone and it's gonna pop in the middle. And that's what happened with your bread. It's not fermented long enough. So you need to work on the fermentation aspect. And once you do, then you will have many, many tiny pockets of air right inside of your bread. So I think that's something you have to uh, improve. And Alien says, <clears throat> everyone always has a starting point. The best teacher is failure. And just keep doing, because still, regardless, your bread probably tasted amazing, Su Young. And just keep doing that work on the fermentation process. That's going to get you to another level. All right, valid point. What if it gets too sour? So <clears throat> my sourdough in general is still very, very, very mild. <clears throat> it's not too sour. Go for a less of a size increase during the bulk fermentation. But typically, I wouldn't say that it tastes very, very, very sour in my bread. Um, try first. OK, what you want to do is you first want to nail the fermentation process that you nail that and then you can work on if that's still a little bit too sour for you then you can work on reducing that acidity a little bit by the way interesting point i'm currently working on a uh, recipe where i just use my ph meter to check the bulk fermentation and what i noticed is <clears throat> that after the bake actually the acidity of the bread is reduced a little bit so uh, compared to before after baking, my uh, bread is suddenly less sour. So I'm just um, experimenting a little bit more. But I think if you bake for a longer period of time, that some of the lactic acid is actually evaporating. And so after the bake, your bread is not as sour anymore as before. So maybe an interesting idea as well, just putting it out here to the crowd. Interesting to, interested to hear your opinions. Maybe baking it longer could actually make the bread less sour in the end. <laughs> Great. Um, Joao was saying, I went to your GitHub and should improve your bro of the meal, your recipe. Yes, please, Joao, submit a pull request on the GitHubs to improve it. <laughs> so Young is saying, uh, sorry, Su Young is saying, thank you, everyone. Yes, thank you so much. And please do submit your bread one more time the next time. That will be super interesting. 
And uh, <clears throat> Matthew is saying, oh, fun. I love that. Can't wait to see. Yes, I hopefully I'll be able to uh, post it very soon. I will keep you informed. <laughs> All right, so next picture. Next picture coming up from Bleen. From Bleen Paper. A couple of weeks, I made my first sourdough bread and was really surprised how well it came out. The crust was a little bit too thick. Okay, let's check this out. Submission from Bleen right here. What do you think? Very excited to hear what you have to say. <laughs> uh, vegan, that's, um, it's linked below my videos typically. There you can find the link to my GitHub account. <laughs> so that's the picture from Bleen. What do you think? What could be improved? While you are writing, I'm already <clears throat> preparing a small video here because it seems that uh, Bleen has baked it just directly on a tray as far as I can see. Over fermented, maybe not enough steam, not enough dough strength. Uh, looks like my first loaf, needs deeper scoring, looks robust and delicious, more steam, steam from Angelica. Crystal is also saying no steam. And Vegan is saying, I think it was too hot. The scoring knife isn't sharp enough. OK, let me show you. I think the problem of this bread is that you did not have enough steam. And let me show you how I like to steam the stingy German way of steaming bread. My bad. Let me just, I think you want to see me as well. So Bleen's picture here one more time. And so uh, why did I show you this video? <clears throat> because I like to use a Dutch oven for baking, but I always want to enable everyone to bake amazing bread. And of course, for a Dutch oven, you have to buy this and it's quite expensive. By the way, there is a video coming out soon on me using a Dutch oven versus the setup that I just showed you. And uh, spoiler there's not gonna be that much of a difference. So the setup that I just showed you works because you have a stone at the bottom, which could also be a hot tray that you preheated. And then you have another bowl of water below, boiling water. And you wanna make sure that that boiling water, that steam is trapped below another tray on top. And that's gonna give you a very steamy environment. Plus the tray on top blocks the direct heat coming from the heating elements in the top of your oven. So. That's why this setup is really amazing. And I want you to give that a shot because just based on your crumb here, <clears throat> I think your crumb looks relatively good. It could probably ferment a little bit longer, but if you now everybody have a look at the top of the bread, there you can see that the crust on the top is even thicker than the crust at the bottom. So that's a sign to me that there was way too much heat coming from the top. <laughs> so, uh, let's check, uh, Simona says, can we see the video again? Maybe one more time in a little bit when um, when another person has a steam issue. So let's vote everybody, one to three. What do you think about this bread? I'm very curious to read your thoughts. So the bread from Bleen here. Bleen just started baking a few minutes ago. Bleen's bread one more time. And hear how Bleen scored the bread. <laughs> so we have a three here. We have a 1.5, uh, two, two. Crystal says two, the crumbs looks pretty good. Still, even if over fermented, outside one, <clears throat> solid 
And um, thank you so very much, everybody, for participating. And I agree, Blin. So the crumb here of your bread looks amazing. I think you want to be working on that steam issue. Um, here, that was the that was the bread that you had from the outside because I think the problem right now for you is that you have too much heat coming from the top. So work on the steam. That's going to make your bread already so much better. Awesome. And there was another great comment here from Vegan, which I just wanted to put here for the discussion. Um, you can make a rounded lid like a Dutch oven using aluminum paper. Just get a big bowl and use as mold. So you just cover your bread with steam and success. Yes, so true. That's definitely going to work. Uh, that will simulate your Dutch oven. Or you use the same setup that I had with another tray on top that also acts like a Dutch oven. OK, next bread. Timo BES. Timo BS has a few words there at the end, which are probably not allowed to be shown on American TV. I think they would have to be censored. <laughs> uh, uh, there was a, fu a, f a funny episode of Eminem coming to Germany, and then he was a on a German TV show. And here, <clears throat> you can just curse and say whatever you want. And he was just really cursing a lot. And he was so happy that things wouldn't get censored or bleeped out. Pretty much. So Timo's bread mm, here. Look at that amazing ear, Timo. Good job. And here the crumb from Timo. Look at that. Nice pockets of air. Good fermentation everywhere as far as I can see. Beautiful picture here. Much better pictures than I take. Is that basil in the background? That's nice basil as well. And here, look at that. <clears throat> look at those slices of bread. And <laughs> Timo says, the result is decent despite the gluten fuck up. Oh, sorry, I should not have said that. <laughs> Glu um, Timo says, the gluten didn't develop very well in the machine. Uh, just one point. So <clears throat> if you don't develop as much dose strength at the start, which is needing, by the way, let me just put up a video here on uh, how I like to create the dose strength. Just putting this on here. So if you don't have a machine, those are the ways how I always like to create those strength. That's um, doing an autolysis. Um, then I do a little bit of kneading. Then I wait. I do some bench kneading. I really think that bench kneading is a very efficient way to add a lot of those strength. So if you're lazy, then that's the way what you want to do. And then sometimes if I go very high in hydration, I like to do the lamination. However, if you do more stretch and folds during the full process, during the full bulk fermentation, then you can compensate for a lack of kneading at the start. So more stretching and folds during the bulk fermentation will have the same effect, just FYI, uh, just for your info. So let's check your bread. Um, let's vote on your bread now here. So one more time, the bread from Timo here. What do you think from one to three for Timo? Vegan Demic asks, what's the point of lamination, which I've just shown in the video? It's pretty much the same as bench kneading, except that you have a larger surface area. And oh, look, the bread is uh, talking. Hello, hello. <laughs> you have a larger surface area, and you are pretty much gluing the dough together a little bit better compared to bench kneading. So it's the same way as bench kneading. So people are saying, Charles is saying 2.8, Kemi is saying 2.8. Jen is saying three, Simona is saying three, uh, Marta is saying three, solid, good job. Um, 
Jose is saying 2.5. So um, personally, Timo, I think I could agree with the others more. The others are giving you great votes here. I think this is not at all, uh, as you said, a screw up. This is the perfect looking bread. So good job. Thanks for your submission. OK, OK. And now we have another submission from Peter Corman. Let's check Peter's submission here. So submission from Peter. What do you think? I would like to focus your attention on the top part of the bread one more time. Look at the crust. What do you see on the top part of the crust? <laughs> Timo, you are welcome. Good job. Thanks for the submission. <laughs> no, so alien, actually a valid point. We don't want to hurt anyone's feeling. It's always a matter of um, giving respectful feedback, of course. And I think this just helps everybody to also know to get a little bit better. <laughs> No, back to this picture here, dark and thick bottom. And I think, yes, Flores, that's such a great comment that you did there. Just looking at this bread, look at the pockets of air. You can see that the bread has proofed and fermented nicely. However, the crust near the top part, as far as I can see, has a too thick crust. And Crystal Temple is saying, looks like a steam issue. Gerardo is saying, steam problem. Vegan is saying, too hot oven. Alien is saying, not enough steam. <laughs> uh, and yes, I think that's exactly the problem. Not enough steam. So that's something that you want to be working on. Not enough steam, Peter. Let me just now, actually, because Simona has been asking for it as well, let me put on the video one more time of how I like to steam without a Dutch oven. <clears throat> oh, wait. Let me just show you what happens uh, when you your oven is too hot first. So that was exactly an experiment that I recently did. And I just baked my bread at a too hot temperature. <clears throat> what I did for the first time is I used the thermometer to measure the temperature instead of my Dutch oven, instead of my oven, and then instead of my Dutch oven. And baking it at a too hot temperature also has negative effects. You need to find a sweet spot. And putting on <clears throat> for you Americans my chart here again. Uh, there we go. So I like to bake at around 450 to 440 degrees. Uh, Fahrenheit, that's around 230 degrees Celsius. And that really makes sure that uh, the crust doesn't form too quickly. You're delaying the reaction, the Maillard reaction, which creates all the browning a little bit, and your bread is able to rise upwards. And if you don't have a Dutch oven, you really don't need one, then you can bake just like this. And I'm now just going to be putting my stingy German uh, hack here on the screen one more time. And that is, where is it? I'm sometimes, I'm very bad at multitasking, by the way. Not sure if you have already noticed. And Steam, there it is. Putting it on the screen. So that was um, how you create a lot of steam in your own home oven. Just a side note, it shouldn't be a glass dish which you have at the bottom because that can crack. I'm using something made out of clay and that can withstand a, a big a change in temperature. Just FYI, that's something you want to do. And that's really going to create you uh, a lot of steam and you're shielding your bread from the heat from the top and you will have much better oven spring. So just going back here on the picture uh, from... Uh, Peter. So Peter, I think you're doing everything right. So thumbs up for that. Good job. 
Um, just keep doing whatever you're doing. Just change the Steam, the Steam setup, and you should be able to get a lot more of in spring. <laughs> I give three bread of the video. Thank you so much. That's actually um, out of one of my sourdough recipes, which is called the last sourdough recipe you ever need. That was the bread that I baked inside of that video. Since then, I've learned a few more things, and I thought, okay, maybe at some point I need to revise that video and change a few things. <laughs> Great, awesome. <clears throat> so next submission. And let's have a let's uh, have another submission on here from Alien Barnacle. So let's check this out. around uh, okay so 11 percent protein flour that's a good flour then quite a lot of whole wheat in there as well nice the buckwheat flour okay buckwheat doesn't have any gluten just fyi um room temperature water starter salt okay very interesting and let's check the breads here from alien And here we go with the crump shot. What do you think, everybody? What do you think about this bread by Alien Barnacle? Let me just <clears throat> also put the recipe here one more time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So your thoughts on this bread? The bread by Alien. <laughs> Alien is here as well. Not one of my best, but I came here to find some advice. Marion says, nice distribution of the holes and crumb, but seems underbaked inside and overbaked outside. Too hot of an oven. <laughs> then Vegan says, you think you didn't score it. Definitely looks like my aircraft. Jeremy saying, no steam. And I just want to focus your attention. <laughs> Alien egg. <laughs> Uh, Jose, yes. So Jose is also a great baker. <clears throat> and Jose has exactly the, sol the solution to the problem, I think. Please look at the large tunnels of air that you see near the top part of the bread. And those large tunnels are typically a sign for that you don't have enough steam. Your bread tries to rise upwards, but then a crust forms and then your bread is not able to rise anymore, and all the pockets collapse into large pockets like that. <clears throat> and that's exactly what happened here on this bread. So I think the key alien here is you need to work a little bit on your steam setup. I think every, you did everything right with this bread. If I just look at the crumb, the crumb looks nice. You have a few pockets of air there, but I think you want to have another look at your steaming setup. So other than that, I think it crumb wise, it looks great, but your baking technique is what's gonna make you nail this bread. No need to change anything. Just try to change the baking technique. And yeah, I'm not sure in which kind of oven you are baking this, but it looks like it's very hot on the one side, but not so much on the other side as well. <laughs> Thanks everyone for the advice. You are most welcome alien barnacle. And MK also says lots of potential here, so just keep it going. I would say I would give your crump, just looking at the crump here one more time, the crump without a steam issue would probably be even a three out of three, but then the steam issue here, the 
turn the outside to maybe a one out of three. So just keep trying a few more times. Uh, you will get there. <laughs> Gerardo says, is it my impression or Steam is a problem for most of us? I think so, Gerardo. I think so. And when I was <clears throat> when I was having this interview with Jim Challenger, who created the Challenger bread pan, he explained this very well. He said, the homemade ovens are made to vent steam. And that's so true. So a normal homemade oven does not allow you to build a lot of steam. And that's why you have to use the Dutch oven, which is pretty much just a hack to counter the actual problem. So too high heat and um, steam, that's very often the problem, I think. And I also think that when you see recipes where they're suggesting, OK, you need to heat it for an hour or so, then it might be that they don't actually measure the exact temperature inside of your Dutch oven. And that's something that I learned the hard way. So please do try to measure the temperature as well, because every oven is unique. And that's also a very tricky part. And that's also very tricky when you see a recipe. You might want to follow that, but then your oven is just different. It might be off by a few degrees, uh, more or less. Great. <clears throat> OK, let's have another look. The last submission of today by Gabriele. Gabriele is saying, my bake of the day. And let's have a look at the bread that Gabriele makes. Mate, mate. <laughs> Sometimes the German is getting through. So, bread by Gabriele. What do you think, everybody? <laughs> One more time. My bake of the day. 400 grams of wheat flour, 70 grams of whole wheat, 65% hydration. She's very happy with how it turned out with, with the first decoration not bursting and getting ugly, but the crust is really, really tight. <laughs> and so, Gabriele, people are saying, nice bunny shape. That's what Frank is saying. Um, 666 Lewis is saying, great bunny shape here. Flores is saying, nice swirl. Jeremy is saying, excellent. Um, Ruben is saying whole wheat. Um, no, she wrote bread flour, but it might actually be a different bread flour, it, or it might be the lighting. I agree. It doesn't look fully like bread flour. <laughs> <laughs> it's around definitely 3.14. <laughs> Very tall, beautiful three for the crumb. Looks like it's smiling. So, Gabriele, I think you made a great bread. If you want the crust to be a little bit Sorry, the, the crust. If you want the crumb to be even fluffier, then you need to make it more extensible, though. And you can do that by increasing the hydration a little bit. But maybe first try to proof it even a little bit more. Um, your crumb should be more fluffy. But overall, I think you already nailed it. There is not too much that can be improved. And I think this pretty much matches with what everybody here is saying on the chat as well. You're getting a heart here. <laughs> And uh, Malini says three, Marta saying 2.8. Yeah, great. So really great looking bread. Whew. Just looking at the time here. Um, oh no, it's Angelica. You edit your photos to image without comment on YouTube. So you don't show my bread. I'm so sorry for not showing your bread. Um, you didn't show mine. So. Everybody, what I was doing is I was just taking the pictures and I was sorting them by most rated, like I wrote in on um, the YouTube post. So just to make sure that we show the most interesting ones. But what I can do is I'll be going through all of them in case I missed one and I'll be dropping you just one personal comment, but not on this live stream because we've already been streaming for, have we really been streaming for 1.5 hours? <laughs> <laughs> so. I'm going to have a look through all the other submissions that we didn't see because it's already been 1.5 hours. And um, yeah, so please, the next time, also drop your comment. I'm going to be announcing it a little bit earlier. And um, then also check the other submissions. Uh, vote up the ones that you find the most interesting, and then we can have the best ones here on the show. All right. OK, so yeah. 
it has been so much fun, everybody. I really enjoyed it. And um, may the gluten be with you. Happy baking. And to the others, please, I'm going to comment um, on your submissions in a second. Have a great evening and talk soon, everybody. Bye-bye. See you.